that. Maybe one more bottle of water, we'll see what happens. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh man, no, I love it. Uh... <laughs> She's so mad Just now. Say like, it, say it. <laughs> Maybe say, it. come on. What did I do? We do lots of radio, and I don't talk over you. <laughs> <laughs> what's a what's Trust me. how long's a radio spot? Like fifteen minutes. Is that yeah, it? yeah, fifteen minutes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just don't know how much radio, you know, is important out here. I mean, you guys tell me. Uh, I mean, you want to you from... want to start it first? You want to get started? Sure. Okay. Hey, everybody! Welcome to this. Probably doesn't matter. I am Luke Atkinson, sitting to my left. As usual, this is my lovely wife, Katie. Hello. Hello, Katie. And with us today are Shy and Kelsey of the Rotten Apples. Of Rotten Apples. No, the... Uh, just Rotten Apples. Rotten singular. Apples. Okay. Yeah. No, one just apple. one apple. Oh. Just one apple. Oh. Yeah. And with us today are Shy and Kelsey of Rotten Apple. Really stomped on that. Sorry, guys. Okay. Um, thank you for being here. Yeah. Thank Happy to be here. here. Yeah. We're really, this is awesome. We're excited. <laughs> yeah. So speaking of radio, um, I mean, <laughs> Town Toyota Center for me, like we do almost all radio. I mean, we do print ads, we do billboards and stuff, but we do like for sure KW3, Coho, Cherry Creek Media, anything like that. So yeah, I know for you know back in LA where we're originally from, or I'm originally from, radio was huge for promoting comedy. Yeah, and so that was a natural thing for us in Chelan just not sure about Monachi, about but. moving this direction yeah. mm-hmm. I would say there was one company here in town recently that was doing pretty heavy radio but I don't know how it worked out for them mm. or if they're even still in business <laughs> so <laughs> maybe that has something to say with it but you went under with too much radio advertising <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't okay I'm gonna tell a story right off the bat that I shouldn't tell I was recently outside of a bar with a local radio personality <clears throat> Not trying to like attack the whole radio thing, but just saying that it it does become less and less prevalent as far as advertising. I think goes right. What's the it, it what's the be... radio station here that everybody listens to? What are the kids listening to these days? <laughs> you're uh, you're one hundred and one, right? Or I'm your like, KW three? So I have like five stations I flip between because I'm that person who hates radio <laughs> or like. Um, Commercials? Oh, we're coming in hard at the beginning of this podcast. So sorry, on but I do listen to the, I do commercials. <laughs> so I'm definitely like 1039 for KW3. I'm Coho 101. Uh, the Bridge 995. Um, Jack FM 943 has been a big one anymore. And then I'm definitely between like KKRV or 947, which yeah. I don't remember which one. So no but. Sunny FM. I am not a Sunny FM person, mm-hmm. but he does. Oh, listen to those dogs. <laughs> yeah. He does do a lot. Um, that was me Dave and Kelsey, Harold's actually. Guy, so. oh. Oh. For the listener. Underneath yeah. the table. Yeah. A little um, scrappy. Yeah, I like so. it. I like it. Anyway, yeah. So, Sunny FM is good. They're good. Okay. <laughs> Kicking off the podcast yeah. with some radio bashing. Yeah. <laughs> we could close the door. We, we got need. dogs and radio bashing. Um. Let's you you mentioned it already, Shy. So you're from LA. I'm from Los Angeles. Yeah. Uh, I moved here when I was four. When I say here, I mean the United States. But uh, yeah, Los Angeles is my hometown. I lived there for 31 years, and then moved to Manson, Washington. You moved to Manson. This is the <laughs> first place you've been <laughs> that wasn't LA. It was either Los Angeles or Manson, Washington. That's <laughs> I knew that was my life, either big, big, big city yeah. or a small, 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 small town. Okay. <laughs> I had no idea. Yeah, but definitely what, what was the, man, were you the Manson connection? No, the, you, you <laughs> there's, said, let's you be s- clear, there's no Manson connection. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, yeah. so essentially, um, I myself lived in Los Angeles as well, that's how Shy and I met, and um, originally I'm from Seattle, and like all Seattle natives, I spent the summers in Lake Chelan, so... Yes. My family migrated over there about eight years ago, and so when Shai and I started getting serious in Los Angeles, I was bringing him to Chelan to meet my family, and that's when we kind of realized that there's this sanctuary that just kind of put us at peace from that city life and thought... Yeah, but really, uh, I was like, this is cool, but I was like, we're not going to live here, right? This is, I mean, this is is nice (laughs) to visit. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, we, we, we thought, we knew that the, the winters were really majestic and secluded, so we were both kind of like, let's take a break from the city and spend a winter 
in, you know, a cabin. We had never lived together before. So we're kind of like, this is a testament of our relationship. Can we handle this? Sure. And if you can <laughs> figure out if you can handle something, it's do it in the middle of winter in Manson, Washington with no neighbors. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no kidding. It's like dead man's town up yeah. there. Are you guys up on the hill? You're not like... We are. You're not in like little Manson proper here, kind of up a little. We're perched up on the the Manson Hills. Yeah, we're we're close to the Blueberry Hill. Okay. Okay. Yeah. (laughs) I just went back there for the first time, uh, probably a month ago, and I was like, I didn't even know like how to get back here or that all that was in there. It's so pretty back there. Oh man! Like get that whole backside there. Yeah. Oh, so pretty. I've gained about 145 pounds since I've moved to Manson, Washington. Okay. Because they don't have fast food. They just have really, really good restaurants. Yeah. No, they have slow food, which is worse than fast food. So only 145. (laughs) So what, you came up here at like weighing what, 65, 70 pounds? That was a cool 70. The math doesn't quite add. He holds cheeseburgers really well. (laughs) I wish I could say the same. Especially when I'm double fisting, you know what I mean? (laughs) (laughs) But I mean, just just to kind of set some context, you know, we never imagined that we'd come up here and start a entertainment production company or event production company. You know, our whole MO was to move to a small town and live a different way of life because right. back in LA, when we met each other, our life was go, 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 go. I'd wake up at five in the morning. I'd work on my consulting business. I would drive to the office for my nine to five and that would be an hour and a half drive, another hour and a half drive to go, you know, organize a meetup in the evening right. and mm-hmm. and then by the time that night is over and i'm all done i see her at 11 p.m and by that time she's already watching friends in her pajamas so there's no hanky panky <laughs> so uh we're just i'm just kissing her good night because you know that was that was life it was and really busy is, it, is that really the whole culture there i mean is that pretty standard yeah at, every I think, day i think you're, that's what you're there for i mean typically if you're in the heart of los angeles like i think both of us were um especially myself, I, I was working, you know, in the fashion industry. If you're in the fashion industry, entertainment industry, comedy industry, any one of those industries that's, you know, there for you to essentially do with what you will, like you're going to take every right. opportunity you can take you have to. to try and get yourself ahead because everyone yeah. else is trying to do the same thing. So it's, it's definitely like a mentality thing. And it's definitely like, I can't miss anything because this, that could be my chance to meet the right person or get in the right place or just, you know, you're always searching to, to get up, you know? Sure. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, and if you're not so, working, you're playing, you know, there's so many yeah. options in Los Angeles. You know, I, I had a ton of, like I said, I lived there for 31 years. And right. so if it wasn't somebody's birthday, somebody was getting married, if somebody wasn't getting married, they were getting divorced and we're partying about that too. So <laughs> there's just, it's, it's just really like, easy to distract yourself when, when life isn't, going great or when it's going really well yeah a lot of options. It, it was just it was just non-stop it really was and mm-hmm. that's that's what i imagined was going to be the rest of my life until i realized there's another place so has manson been a deep breath you feeling good oh yeah, yeah. well you know okay this is what i'll say so the first <laughs> the first year when we were there yeah it was completely the opposite we uh, were feeling mm-hmm. like a retired couple yeah mm-hmm. and it was amazing it was amazing because we were number one we were connected to our surroundings between the mountains and the forest and the river and the lake and the love that we started to build with each other, Mm -hmm. everything was starting to make sense. I finally saw what I was missing from my life and that was connection to one person like I've never had before, but also connection to the universe. Is this too early to get philosophical? No, let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. So, and it was, it was that slow down that, that allowed for that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it was good. It was If you think about that 5 a.m. to 1 a.m. schedule that I had on a daily basis, and it would go even later in the weekends when you're partying, Mm -hmm. and then you go and scale that all the way back now, you're waking up at 5 a.m. and you have three hours to yourself. Yeah. Yeah. You know, now now we're cooking flapjacks. Yep. Yeah. And, you know, with fresh blueberries, and, (laughs) you know, I'm watching bald eagles fuck in the air. I mean, it's (laughs) like, this is... Are you allowed I to say? Uh, allowed I to love that. No, absolutely. Are you allowed to say no, eagle? Yeah, absolutely. eagle's fine. Okay. <laughs> eagle. I wasn't sure. Uh, bald, we're kind of so-so. Yeah, on, but sorry that's about why that. I wear a hat. Yeah. So okay, sorry about that. <laughs> you can say eagle no, for great. sure. Oh man. But I agree with you on the five a.m. thing. I've been doing that recently, and I it changes my morning. Like it changes my whole day. Mm-hmm. Like, to get up a little bit before you have to be going. Yeah. I mean, I got three hours of my life back. Yeah. You know, and that's a lot when it was adding up, and I was getting old really fast. I mean, and people obviously 
listening to this can't see what I look like. But so is all that gray in your beard? Is yeah. that what you're telling me about? Right yeah. Now? If you really look closely, it's gray at the tips, which yeah. that's weird, right? Yeah. What does that mean? Yeah. It, it means that uh, these guys are dead at the tips, and yeah. then the new hair is growing and is alive, but it starts to die, and this is left over from my previous life and i'm growing a new life so i'm almost reborn out here I were you it. all white when you moved here uh no i've always been brown my whole life I, I <laughs> no. oh oh I he's, just making, skin. he's like a res- reverse michael yeah, jackson yeah. oh that's good no. yeah <laughs> i meant no, the, people the mistake me for hair. yeah you know i'm sure. cool i assimilate you know um, uh no yeah it it was it was pretty i've i've always had you know white hair from a young age Wow. Is it too early to go into childhood? And, and, Yo, and, hey, no. no, I'm so excited to do whatever you want to do right now. I was gonna. Is it? Is it? Is it? Is it an Indian thing to go white earlier? Um, you know what? Well, are you Indian? I mean, I went white. For, oh, I went white five assumption. years ago. If you know what I mean. I thought I was doing okay at it. Uh, tisk tisk. Close. So I'm from Bangladesh. Which oh, is are we close? Very close. Thank it's you. A, okay. India has the country of Bangladesh in a headlock. If you look at a map, that's where it is. You're so right you, there. Uh, that's me. Yeah, it's our own. We're our own country. It's uh, and you came here when you were four. Four. Yeah. Do you remember? Uh, a little bit. I remember when we landed in New York. Yeah. And as soon as I got off the plane, I landed on my face, and I still have a scar on my eyebrow. Oh, nice. Yeah. Welcome to America. Yes, exactly. Thank you. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and I've never gotten back up. <laughs> oh. Uh, but uh, you know, oh. that was that was our first stop. And then okay. we came to LA. That's where my uncle was, and my aunt. She had married somebody. Uh, I have eleven aunts and uncles on my mom's side, and twelve aunts and uncles on my dad's side. Oh wow! wow. Uh, my dad's side, they're all kind of more countryside people, and they stayed back home. But we had two pioneers from my mom's side of the family, uh-huh. and then they moved out here. My uncle was like, "Come, come visit me. Come yeah. visit me. Come visit me." And we did. And uh, the first thing he told my dad was, "You guys can't leave. I know you came to visit me, but you can't leave. Oh, if you God. want." your son to have a great future and you want him to have education, you can't leave. Interesting. And so we just never did. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. You ever go visit? Uh, I've been back three times. Yeah. yeah three awesome. times. Yeah. It's, it's cool. I mean, it's, it's totally different. Third world. Oh. Yeah. It's like East Wenatchee. I mean, I'm talking <laughs> yeah. I like it. You got the Are joke. we allowed to talk? <laughs> no, I, yeah. I love that. I love that you have the joke, shy, and I love Kelsey's reaction to every one of oh, them. I'm, it's I'm like sleeping. she doesn't realize it's coming, and then you say it, and she's like, you would say that. Yeah. I get, yeah, I get in a lot of trouble. I get in a lot of trouble. Um, Luke will be like, you want to hear the joke I told today? Yeah. And I'm like, uh, sure. Never. No. Don't And then he says it, and I'm like, yeah, They're always really good. Me. The first two to three times yeah you you gotta have the hits right come on you gotta gotta get the repertoire going yeah okay so this this is something that i've been wondering shy is uh you you came here you got into comedy was it something that a you were into before or b that you have done much personally of well my uncle was the person who is the reason why i'm here right he's the one who cultured me about music about art about comedy and it, comedy and music were right up there for him. He taught me, you know, like at a very young age with a very conservative family, he's the one that exposed me to Cheers and Roseanne. Oh yeah, and, and you know, a lot of these comedy, you know, even watching things like Family Ties, you know, he he taught me about American culture, and you know, comedy was that bridge that really allowed me to have that conversation with him. And he's he was my mentor and my idol for many many years, um, and. So at a very young age, it was all about laughing and having a good time. Right. And, and so as I got older, that just became part of my personality. I've, I've, I've typically been a black sheep in, in, in our culture, but not in a very overt way. But, you know, sense of humor is kind of the thing that allowed me to navigate who both do you, worlds. Uh, who do you listen to? Um, are you are you a, are you a blue comedy guy? Are you, um, you know, I'm not. I, I'm a little more abstract. I'm a little more alternative comedy. Uh, you know, I listen to comedy Bang Bang, kind of that, that universe. I like Bang Bang. Yep, that's great. Yeah, that's that's kind of my world. Uh, you know, I love I love like what stuff like Reggie Watts does. And, okay. Um, but I'm a, I'm a you know superstar fan too of like Louis C K. Of course, of course. I, I love Anthony Justin. Like yep, Justin. People that incredible. You get his, you got his new one already. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I'm already stealing his jokes. Telling good, them perfect. To yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's go. work some of those in here. I'd yeah. like that. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not a joke stealer. I, at least, at least. Uh, is it too early to talk about real estate? Yeah, <laughs> let's go that. Let's go that way. 
That's oh man, I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let you take it. Yeah. <sighs> no, look. The long and short of it is that comedy has always been kind of my bread and butter for meeting people. You know, from being from a different country and kind of always being an outsider. All my friends were of. So other you were races. hitting open mics in L.A. and I stuff like that. I was not. You were never. I'm not a comedian. Oh, okay. I'm not a okay. comedian. Okay. Okay. No, okay. I love having a good time in our friend circles. I mean. Kelsey That's, knows. Like I we, love that you just said that. That's actually my only excuse for most of my behavior is I love having a good time. Yeah. The, the people ask me why you took your shirt off at the wedding, and it's like, I just really like to have a good time. That's actually... <laughs> was it at the wedding or it was your at a, wedding? It was at a okay. wedding. No, okay. no, no, no not mine. Okay. No, I actually kept mine on for ours, but I, I, I took <laughs> right. it off at a friend's Seth. recently. <laughs> yeah. It's just, I just like to have a good time. So he I started I, having I an obsession that. of taking his shirt off about mm, six months ago, like pretty regularly at... <laughs> Social it's because here's 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 what it is. I decided that Burt Kreischer cannot own the taking the shirt off thing. Right. I, I he can't. <laughs> he can't. It can't just be his. <laughs> so I'm gonna do it too. All right. I envy Burt Kreischer. Now I envy you. By the way, just thought <laughs> the people that can just take their shirt off and be so free about it. Oh, you know, yeah. I'm so self conscious. So I did it. I, I don't even like wearing half sleeve shirts. You know. I did it at a or set. A I did it during a set a few weeks ago, and it was the best feeling thing to me ever because it's like everything that I'm self-conscious about it's like my tits are out now so I can actually just feel free to tell you my stupid jokes did you have X's on the nipples or I no? did not oh. no I actually <laughs> even asked Ron at the radar station if he had gaffer tape because I was gonna put some on he wouldn't give it to me no I just busted the shirt off it was just like it felt good it's like here here it is and now I can just say what I want to say to you and fucking Bert can't own it he can't own it well, I hate anyone who thinks Bert can own that. No one owns freedom, right? <laughs> I mean, it's we all take our shirt off at is some there, point. Is there yeah, only is right. there only one stripper? I mean, there, you, know, you know there is. Do you know her? We got her, like, name, and, you know we got her <laughs> name and number. This podcast brought to you by Chastity five zero nine six three zero. Don't really stop. give a number yeah, out because it's probably <laughs> real. Yeah. Oh no! I thought uh, you get phone calls like I heard that you're like a you're the only stripper in Winnipeg. Yeah, you've narrowed Chastity. it down to five phone numbers by the way by <laughs> saying six three zero. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's yeah the oldest. True. It's the oldest Winnipeg prefix. So. Yeah. <laughs> So oh, you guys are man. doing comedy at Red Lion for yes. the Wenatchee location. Mm -hmm. And then you have just Campbell's in Chelan? Yeah. So, well, up until a few weeks ago, actually, we were doing all of our shows at Campbell's. Um, but we got the chance to do a show at the Ruby Theater. Oh, I saw that. Yeah. And that was really, really cool. I heard it was magic. a really good area and like yeah the vibe yeah a good vibe for it all around um the, the theater itself was incredible the acoustics in there were like so awesome it felt like i was listening to a laugh track or something it was oh, so yeah. cool um everybody came out for it we had a lot of different like partnerships and um things we did with the chamber and the theater itself and every you know in town was super supportive about it so that was really really That's cool awesome. to see and to see that people are really supporting performing art and and culture and and you know and and wanting it so yeah um i'd say it was probably about 50 50 as far as locals and visitors alike but uh yeah we're gonna do it we're we're, we're gonna continue to do shows at in campbell's and then we also have another show at the ruby um not this week but next week as well oh so. perfect yeah because so we're gone this week yeah, yeah. But we'll be back next week. yeah is yeah. it is it another chance at the same lineup or are you bringing new comedians in for that other show every week is a new comedian yeah we so have we have new awesome. lineup every week okay. Mm -hmm. okay but you do the same comedian in wenatchee and then you take them to chelan right. is that right. how that yeah, works that's cool yeah when kind of like our pit stop because most of them fly in from um, well i mean let's give us some background yeah. about so please yeah how'd so, you I, I guess yeah we, we've kind of we, yeah. skipped sections yeah, yeah if we take it back to you, know, you came up from L.A., right? Can we go from there? Yeah, L.A., okay. and okay. then we, we moved here, and then yep. for the first year, we were like uh, uh, old retired For couple. the listener, if you hear these dogs, they're actually having the best time, and I'm not going to stop <laughs> and them. I so. really don't appreciate you calling me a dog. Oh. That's the second time you did that. <laughs> Man, we, we love having them here. Yeah. Yeah. Both right. of these dogs. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay. Cash and Colt. So <laughs> you made him feel awkward. Yeah. <laughs> I, had to, I, had to, I had to actually process <laughs> what was said to me for a second. I love live processing. That's great. That's great. That's authentic. Was I not supposed to call you? Is it that bad if I called you Indian? No. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's the same as calling. Just don't call me, me late for dinner, right? Maybe. Maybe no. Right. Um, so sorry, I was, wasn't we, the. <laughs> 
talking to my life. <laughs> Katie yeah, declared war on Canada in a couple podcasts ago. So, <laughs> oh no, yeah, she did. I just started singing the national anthem. It was, it was very, <laughs> very peaceful. I did see the price of maple went up that day. So, <laughs> thanks for that. You're oh, welcome. Goodness. Okay, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> the first year we were basically an old retired couple, which was fantastic until I think both of our city streaks. You know, she worked in the high pace fashion world traveling the entire united states and even going to australia so it was a really fast-paced lifestyle yeah same for me i was in tech and i was doing a lot of entrepreneur type things and uh when i say that it means like a lot of failed projects uh so basically (laughs) i was constantly on the move and then to be still for one year was great but what it really did was realize that we potentially have something to offer our new home you know maybe there's something we could bring back from home which we can do in Chelan. We'll just call it Chelan. We live in Manson. We'll just call it, the, the, you know, Chelan. And, you know, we're thinking about flower shops or dry cleaners. Even We even flirted with a recycling plant. But all those things, you know, at the end of the day, it's brick and mortar and there's overhead and there's seasonality. There's a lot yeah. of scary things about investing. In it, and that's probably why those things don't exist. Um, having said that, it didn't mean that we weren't not ready to try it. We just didn't know what we wanted to do. Um, and then in 2018, we just had a bunch of people come visit us. But at the very beginning of the year, one of my buddies came up from L.A., who I've known for over two decades. And uh, he worked at the Hollywood Improv as a talent booker for 10 oh, years. Cool. And uh, he came up and he wanted to write a pilot because he wanted to get away from L.A. and just really just focus on creative, creative writing. Um and he uh, asked us, what the heck do you guys do around here? <laughs> Kelsey and I looked at each other. We said, oh, well, we uh, play trivia. Oh, I right? started juicing. We started juicing. Oh, yeah, juicing. <laughs> yeah, super fun. <laughs> Board games. What do you want to play, bro? Like, yeah. You tell me, you know. Uh, uh, we cook. So we just went over all these things. He's like, okay, okay, but what do people do for fun in the nighttime to go out? And we named off a couple bars, but... He said, well, what if we brought comedy? If I brought comedians up here, would you to be the legs and produce the show? Right. That's we so had, cool. We had no, I mean, we had no idea how to produce a show. I mean, Kelsey's put on events as far as, you know, for um, uh, the trade shows and, mm-hmm. you know, things that we do recreationally, but sure. not, not professionally. And this was, this was someone that had the connections and the infrastructure to really send you the yeah. right people. And an experience as yep. well. It's just yep. on like how a proper club is run. And next thing we knew, we were kind of writing our business plan and taking a trip. We actually took a trip to Sahican in the dead of winter. Okay. And it was an awful cloudy day and couldn't see anything. But that's when we wrote our business plan. And we spent those hours just... We were just, I think, vibrating off of all, you know, Jesse had this energy about it. We had felt this way about Shalam, but just hadn't quite cracked the code. And as soon as he kind of enlightened us, we were, we were like, oh, my God, yeah, that, that makes so much sense. Like there's each one of us has the ability to kind of uh, carry each other in different ways. And so it would just seem like this perfect uh, group uh, to, to steer crew, I guess, to start to start what we started and. They went pretty fast after that. Yeah, so my background is in uh, traditional arts, graphic design, logo design, brand design, uh, website development, app development, marketing, really, advertising. Really, really important stuff. Oh yeah. So like just to enjoy yeah. digital like digital work. logo is amazing. Yeah. Oh, you, you designed so it. I did, yeah. yes. I, lo- I actually, I love how all of your online media stuff looks. It's, yeah. it's ridiculous. Thank it you, looks man. very, very nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She came up with the name. You want to tell them about the name? Yeah, so, you know... I'm sure you guys could relate to this too. Like just this entire region, I think of, of the state. And I mean, maybe even the state itself, I just feel like Washington's very proud and a lot of things represent, you know, kind of exactly what they are. Um, and a lot of it has to do with, with the name as far as, you know, just representing the name or something in Washington that is only true to Washington, like apples or cherries or, um, I mean, that's pretty much it. Babe. Yeah, well, apples just, and cherries. Okay, I'll, 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 I'll help you. Like, do you know every, what I mean? Everything, everything in this little particular valley is. Yeah, like they're Col- proud about it. Columbia it, Valley, blank Columbia Valley, heating. Exactly. Cool, yeah, it's it very is. much yes, on the nose. Yes, 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 same yes, with yes, Chelan. Yes. It's like Lake Chelan yeah. Winery, yeah. And Lake Chelan Lanes. Yeah. Like, you know, so we were like, okay, Two well, plugs. we want to be. <laughs> You're welcome. Free. Yeah. You can contact me later. Yeah. I'll invoice you. 
<laughs> um, no, but, it, you know, I thought, OK, well, if we were to kind of play on that, you know, and, and represent central Washington, like what would the play on words be? And obviously, we, you know, we thought of apples because yep. that's like the biggest thing. And so we're thinking of all these different apples and these different kind of puns. And and well, like, like we guys like if we were an apple, like we'd be rotten. Right. Like because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like comedy is kind of. You know, taboo, especially in like these parts, you know, but it's like something that people don't do often and it's a little bit like out of a lot of people's realm. And um, so we thought it'd give it kind of this, you know, mysterious name. A lot of people think we're a cider company. Oh, okay. Um, (laughs) What a terrible name for a cider company, though, (laughs) really. Like, Like, I'm not sure if I want the rotten apple. If you're thinking that's what it is, that's a terrible choice. It's between rotten or shitty apple. Okay, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so, and it just kind of, at first, the guys kind of laughed about it, like, I don't know, Kelsey, that's a little on the nose, but then the more we thought about it, the more we were like, you know, it actually makes a lot of sense, and I think that it would ring, like, you know, kind of sit with people's hearts a little bit, because we were kind of representing exactly where we are, and and we are proud of where we are, and and that we can bring people to this place, so, yeah. That's That's awesome. That's cool. So, our first year was a big, big, big gamble. I mean, it was just a... A test. We ended up booking a full suite of LA headliners. So okay. for twelve weekends, we flew in headliners from Los Angeles and their features from around the nation. <clears throat> but it wasn't just LA. There was Chicago. It was Kansas. It was Atlanta. So these were all touring professional comedians. Yeah. And uh, and just, this was just in Chelan for just, the shows. Yeah, just in okay. Chelan. Five shows a weekend. Five shows a weekend. We went all. I mean, that's wow. a lot. And of you shows. were going. Were you, uh, can I, okay. So were you going easy on your audience? What do they pay to come see one of these? Twenty bucks. Twenty five. Uh, it was twenty five for yeah. GA, thirty five for VIP. I mean, okay. we had we kind of did the math. And, yeah, I mean, yeah. you of course yeah. you have to, and and then twenty five is a reasonable. Comedy show ticket. Oh, if yeah. you're talking about the talent that you're talking mm-hmm. about, mm-hmm. right? Obviously, there's worlds where you can't charge that, but yeah. But if you're bringing in a professional comedian, you should expect to pay twenty five dollars. And and yeah. you know, at first, you know, the first three weekends, we were a little like, well, why, why do we do this? Like this was a mistake. I mean, <laughs> who do we think we are coming and you from were, this you town? You were continuing to be involved in your. With your friend who was booking him, yeah, is he? He's part of the business. He's, he's, he's our he's, business partner. Yeah, yeah. Okay. that's us three. Yeah, we're, okay. We're. I mean, we. He was flying up every weekend. So what was every weekend he was coming up? What was to... what was he feeling? Was he hold tight? It's going to get there. Were uh, you all Were you all a little bit skeptical? I don't think any one of us had any idea what was going to happen because okay. not only were we new to the area, we were new business, you know, whole owners in the area, and everyone kind of told us like this is so hard in in this area like you guys are going to see so we kind of had this like we were a little bit scared we were like okay is this going to work and i think we all just kind of went into it like i don't even honestly it was all such a blur last summer like looking back at it now it's like weekend to weekend i don't even remember all of the details because i think we were just all in this mode of just like just just go like just do it (laughs) and we'll see what happens on the other side um and the blackout <laughs> drinking too. Remember that? Yeah, there's, <laughs> there's <laughs> <laughs> gotta get through the pain, right? Yeah. yeah. No, but it was. I I thought all in all, even though we didn't know what was gonna happen at first, like it was super exciting and and just magical every weekend. Like, and it was, was this kind of like what what are we doing? Was this your main bet? Were you guys working? Oh, uh, we were both working still. I'm You're still, still working. both working. I'm, still, I'm working okay, right now. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. Uh, like, so not all the rat- rotten apples are in one basket right now. No, oh. no, they're not. <laughs> what a good analogy, that one down, honey. Did you yeah. write that one down? Yeah. Um, it's a new new joke brought yeah, to you yeah. by Luke. Atkinson. Wow. <laughs> what do we have to wait thirty minutes for that one? <laughs> okay, um, brutal. <laughs> yeah. No, I I like that one because we do keep our apples in the basket all, too. All uh, last summer, I, I was a crazy person. We all were. I mean, I was working at a coffee shop at like six a.m. every morning, and then doing the shows, and then yep. waking up and, and doing that whole grind. And then like going with the hang with the comedian. So we were staying yeah. out till two, three a.m. Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. she was going to work at six a.m. the next day. So it was just taking Gosh. to the airport. You know, because that's the other thing too is like you part transport. Of, yeah. Well, yeah, and Jesse's big. You know, big thing about it. it was, you know, he has a lot of history in comedy and and that world, and 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 even the way the comedians get treated, and he understands the importance of of kind of hospitality and like customer service in that realm. And like, that's huge. Not only are we bringing these guys up here to this place and girls that, that they've never guys comedy (laughs) that they've never been before. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. Who's interrupting who now? Like, (laughs) I'm done. 
My last name's Guy, by the way, so it could have been Guys. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, but like we're, you know, we, we wanted to give them an experience that was just beyond like, okay, we booked the show, we're going here, we're not going to interact. Like we wanted to make sure that they were taken care of, that they're experiencing the lake the way that people come here to visit experience totally. it. And so they took that experience home with them. And so that was very much important to us too. So it's not like we're just putting on a show, like we're like putting on a show for these comedians as well. And well, and, you know, they all talk and if they're like, yeah. dude, Lake Shoreline was amazing. Yes, yeah. yeah, go. Yeah. Like and they bring back their comedian friends exactly. and you never know, you know, it goes right back into that, that LA like, you know, networking thing where it's right. like, there's nothing intentional there, but if you're just kind of on that same wavelength, like, so by now you guys must get approached. We do. Yeah. You, you, mm-hmm. you get to that, that point where you've done a, a good enough job and you, and you can start getting, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Of course, I think, that's really are cool. we one year into your business? One year in, um, a little bit over a year, um, like, uh, so we call May this our sec- this is our second season, basically. Yeah. Yeah. May 16th is our official, like, first show. Okay, cool. So it's been, no, we've awesome. had, yeah. Yeah. So just over a year old. And we just started Wenatchee in March. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say it's pretty new to Wenatchee, but, yeah. Because I love Red Lion. Like, I'm really good friends with everyone in there. And actually, my soon to be sister in law works there. So, oh, really? Yeah. Very I've got cool. the connection in there. Yeah. So. Um, everyone at Red Lion's been super supportive and, like, I mean, super all, really, just... all our vendors, they've, they've had to buy in, you know, uh-huh. whether it's Red Lion or right. the Campbell's. Campbell's are the first ones to believe. And I know yeah. they've, they've done comedy in the past before, but, you know, we came with a totally different proposal. You yeah. Know, like, it's we are the owners of the experience and you right. are. Uh, you know, giving the, the, the resort type feel and the bartending and that part of it. So it was really a collaboration and, and painting that picture of how this would work. Mm-hmm. And it was a new idea. So they were great. And of course, the Ruby is a different dimension to it. So sure, each one of our true. venues are, have their own style. But I got to give Kelsey a lot of credit because she transforms each one of these rooms as well. You know, uh, at Campbell's, they're pretty much conference rooms or right, ballrooms. Yeah. And her vision for the rooms that takes a lot of work to make it feel right. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> it's amazing. I yeah. mean, yeah. we, uh, um, she learned how to set up and set lighting on the lighting trust. Yeah. And we invested in that and her and her father built a backdrop so that it's just not awkward windows and yeah. drapes in the background. <laughs> I like it. It's yeah. your, isn't it your logo and stuff? Yeah. Too? And we wanted like a, um, yeah, red lions is set up a little bit differently, but we have for the original stage, we had like, you know, I wanted like the red velvet curtains and like that, that classic, you know, grand theater feel, because I just feel like we've lost so much of that. Like, you know, when, you know, like the, the, there's not, that's close attention to detail sometimes when little events and things like that, people don't think it matters, but, but it really does go a long way. And, um, yeah, I think it's been a huge attribute to to the experience people are expecting when they come, you know, like it it's not just like, oh, you know, they take it more seriously. They they get dressed up for the night. It's a right. night out they on do. the town, they you do. know. Right. It's like an, in the off season it was so beautiful. We had just clusters of, of people in their fifties and sixties like just, coming what she out. Says off season, by the way. So in our summer yes. we had twelve weekends, okay. five shows a weekend. Yep. Off season as you guys know, yep. starts in September. So October, October and November, we only did one show per a month. month. Mm-hmm. Just mm-hmm. one so we went from night, five shows one a show. weekend to one show a month. Mm-hmm. The locals told us to. They said we will come if you put on a show, and we said okay. So we tested it, it and rough? sure enough, no, we sold, sold out, out every, every time. time one sixty every time. Yeah, you, you know, and there, there's, an argument, there's an argument. There's an argument. Wow, there's awesome. an mm-hmm. argument to be made about doing the winter months where mm-hmm. you will actually get your locals that you didn't get during the summer. Yeah, oh, because yeah, they don't know because they're during busy. the summer everyone's every, they're they're hiking or biking or this this town drives me nuts with how fucking sporty everyone is. Yeah, um, <laughs> so tell us how you really feel. That's how I'm just gonna do that. Uh, so yeah, the, the the winters the winters ripe too. So yeah, it's we, interesting. We did October sold out show, November sold out show, Winter Fest. Yeah, we had two yeah. nights Winter Fest. Oh yeah, yeah. We had two fifty each night. Mm. <laughs> which was amazing. Wow. It was like, Is this at the Campbell's in the big so ballroom? Yeah, yeah, so there's, you know, three or four different ballrooms that they kind of rotate us on. In the off season, we were in that upstairs room called the Stahegan Ballroom, and that's okay. the one that seats 160. Yeah. Um, for Winterfest, we had the Centennial, which is the biggest ballroom, and that seats 250. That's the one and that's downstairs. what we're going to be yeah. in this week as well for July can 4th. I, can I, I, I should have just been to one of these, and I'm really <laughs> fucked up for even having to ask this question. Uh, seating flat and pretty high stage? Yeah. Is that how it works? Yeah, so it's about, 
about a two foot and a half stage. So you can see. But Everyone yeah. can see. Everyone can Everyone see. So you don't have see. to do the risers or anything no, like that. No, because it's big, but it's not that big. Right. Like, even if you're in the very back of the room, it, you the know, stage it's still is high a pretty enough. small We test room. it. We do sound. Yep, ch- I mean, of we, course. And they have a really good sound system throughout the ballroom itself. I, I just, I love these nuts and bolts questions. I yeah, just, yeah. Like, that stuff's yeah. interesting to yeah. me. Yeah, so. you know, that's 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 everything. The sound. Yeah. The lighting. Yeah. Uh, you know, does everybody have a good view? Yeah. So all of that is, I mean, she... We get there like five hours early. Yeah, uh-huh. of course. Yeah, I mean, everything, everything. <laughs> Every we week, do. it's like, it's it's so weird. It's like we're on, we say how we're like, it's like Groundhog Day because this is the first, uh, this is how I know that it's right because for the first time ever, I think I could say that every single week I start over like, like it's the first week we've ever done it yeah. because it's a new comedian. It's a new experience. Maybe it's a new theme for the new weekend, people. new people, but we go into that room and it's like every time, it, you know, usually you kind of, you get worn out of something, right. And you're like, ah, whatever. It's fine. Just the way it is. It's like, it always has to be just perfect every time because I think that we are so invested to it. We've seen like the amount of joy that it brings to other people. And, um, so yeah, it's just, it's just worth it every time. And, and it's a really beautiful feeling to, to feel that way about what you do. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. I will say you guys, I love the Grizzly Lounge setup like that. Yeah. I, Thank we've you. been there for after party rodeo. So we know it as like the Western thing. Sure. Like, so I didn't really know what to expect when we went there. It was uh-huh. really but well done. Sitting at the table, having that experience with the server, yeah. mm-hmm. being right up there with the comedian. That was super That's awesome. Very like, nice. Thank really you so good much. job. Thank okay, you. guys, I'm not done yet, but I am going to take a little break that our listeners are going to know nothing about because we'll be right back. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, maybe these dogs can run off some energy outside real fast. <laughs> yeah, okay. Perfect. All right. Hey, everybody. We're right back into it. You didn't know what we just did. Hello. Uh, you definitely didn't know what I did. It was all I was sorts. Alone. I was alone in the room. All sorts of crazy. Oh, no. That's a lie. That's a lie. That's a lie. <laughs> okay. Uh, one of the questions that I had thought of right before we left, and you bring a lot of comedians mm. to to the valley. Uh, can you tell me what's the weirdest writer you've gotten from a comedian? Mm. Well, you know, we don't, we don't really... Do I mean first of all we don't really look at the contracts that's not that's what our business partner does okay. and for the most part we uh, yeah I mean there's really no writers you're 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 bare bones we're kind of like the exception to the rule because in in flip for some of these comi- there are some comedians that do have a writer and uh, we we've seen them but it, it's interesting how the, the mentality kind of changes once they get here because it's not the normal show right so they might have certain expectations because that's what they're used to and in, in the realm of like what they do but once they get here things kind of change because we kind of do things you know we, we do things differently and and i think they realize that immediately and uh i think there's kind of this trade of hospitality to expectation because they realize like Oh, these these people are normal people too, and we're all in this together, and we're just gonna have a good time this weekend, and it, we don't, it doesn't have to be tit for tat. You're not we're in this you're together. not a weird out there booking agent who's just right. making something happen. You're it, and you're it there. Be. It's yeah. personal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because yeah. I do a lot of the the up to you know up until or I do all of it really like the advancing and all you know the communication with the comedian up sure. until the day they come, and they could definitely have a certain attitude up until they meet us, and then they get here and they're like, oh okay, like. The whole lake vibe kind of just runs through everything and it just changes, I think, their entire perspective of the experience and they just kind of roll with it. Um, And some, you know, some are super like want to do everything and some don't. But, you know, it's like we're there if they want to do anything. Yeah, everything. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. There there hasn't been a nightmare yet. Mm, I wouldn't call it a nightmare. (laughs) I don't know if I want to. You want to kill that? You want to kill that? We'll kill all of it. We'll kill that. Uh, Cut. <laughs> yep. Cut it. <laughs> and we're back. But we could say and cross but, the line, Kelsey. Yeah, yeah. yeah. After but being... but we could say that. Yeah, I mean, I th- I would just say that that mostly uh, you know ninety eight percent of your comedians have been awesome <laughs> to work with. Can yeah. we say that? No, I mean, I would say yeah. This is this is the this is the truth. Um, when we see our comedians, yeah, we're all hanging out. We're just people you know we know what type of experience they've had we know that they travel the world living their art and their performers and they're well respected but when they come they've all had that down-to-earth mentality where we can go you know have fun at a at a bar down the street or have a conversation you right know, th- there hasn't been any of that where 
it's standoffish or it feels right. weird. It doesn't feel like a transaction. It feels like an authentic right. experience. Right. And they kind of get that small town feel probably in terms of the hospitality, like you said, where they meet you in person and things just get way more personable. Yeah. Too. It's like I pick them up from the airport and I'm like standing outside of my car, like ready to greet them, you know, and, and it's like, do you make a sign for him? <laughs> No, they should. I should. Yeah, that's a great idea. I would. I would make it the most absurd sign <laughs> yeah. you absolutely ever could. Just, just like a <laughs> penis, like draw like a ball as a dick. Yeah. I just try to bombard them with with kindness and hospitality, right? When they so they know, listen, like they this isn't gonna be Kelsey. They yeah. love. I Kelsey. can only imagine. I, Kelsey's great. I love Kelsey already. <laughs> like, you, can, you can use this. You can use this because because it's a positive story, obviously. But but uh, uh, there's a there's a couple comedians that came into town, and. At the end of every weekend, we have to break down our set. We got to right. take down the, the lights. Show. We got to, you know, undo the backdrop. We got to pack up all the tablecloths. I mean, we own all the stuff, so we have to pack it down, take it with us, and back home. So it's a, it's kind of anticlimactic after five shows, a big weekend. Everybody, we all had a great time, and now the comedians are got to wait for us to to break down for about an hour. Right. Um, and not only that, they have to fly out the next morning to take the three thirty a.m ride to Wenatchee to catch Sometimes. the 6 a.m. Mm-hmm. Well, the, last year it was all like that. Yeah, that's true. I'm talking about last year. So last yeah. year, every, Everyone every went weekend, out early we learned from that. Early, <laughs> early flight, right? Mm-hmm. And so um, one weekend, um, we got used to that pattern. I was like, you know what, guys? I can just take you right home. Uh, you don't have to wait for us to break down or any of that stuff. So uh, if you guys are ready to go, I'll take you home right now. And they're like, whoa, 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 whoa. We want to say bye to Kelsey. Man. Oh yeah, oh. where's Kelsey at? That's like, the I'm more like, important oh, part. Okay. Yeah, because I'm like I'm all high strung and I just want to whatever you guys want. I'll take care of you. We'll take it. Like, hey man, we got to say bye to Kelsey. That's man. all they wanted Funny. to do. Yeah, that's all they needed to do. So I mean, they that. they really make a connection with her from the beginning. That's awesome. That's a good. That like helps too. You know. Yeah, I in mean, terms of- I just try to like you know, I, I, and I think maybe I can attribute that to. Uh, just coming from an industry where you, it doesn't matter who you are or, or where you rank in the world or anything. It's just like, everyone's a human. And I think if you start with lead with that approach and show no fear and, and show that you're like approachable, then they're going to be just as approachable. And, and you start that, you know, we start, we always start a text thread like a week prior to them coming and I just you know, with them and their feature. Right. We want to make the feature feel comfortable too because yep. they especially get the short end of the stick a lot of times, right? But it's like, they're, they could be a headliner one your, day. Your like, comedians are picking their features? Correct. Yes, yeah. they okay. do. Because we okay. want them, that's another part of it. Like, we're like, oh, if you're going to come out here, come bring someone you know and like and want right. to hang out with and right. go on the lake with. Or you some, bring somebody you don't want to like it and you murder them after the fish show. Totally. Yeah, we'll we'll whatever you. works. A lot of places. And comedians, yeah. comedians, if you're listening, we'll help you with that too. Big yeah, lake. We, we it's a big lake to bury bodies in. It's a White glove and black glove service. <laughs> that's reference to OJ. Yep. Don't worry, guys. That doesn't really happen. Like, <laughs> not yet. Only <laughs> Luke, yes, it does. That's fine. This probably doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, <laughs> perfect. So you guys are used booked so many more comedians right there. Yeah. 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 Because everyone wants to kill someone. Yeah. Well, oh, mean, man. Now's my chance. <laughs> <laughs> I they don't call it the Manta connection for no reason. Oh, mm-hmm. okay, I can cut that. <laughs> should, should we cut this whole interview? We're yeah. not cutting any of this. No, I, I'll give you that little section. That's all I'll give you. I don't even know. I, I don't want to give you it, but I'll give you the one earlier. Yeah, it's already gone to the listener. You don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <Yeah>. So, <laughs> absolutely fantastic. Okay, so that's what I was going to ask you. Was weird writer. Um, you uh, you do some stage time still though, shy, don't you? I do. I mean, I'm a. I'm not even a host. I call myself an admin. That's the oh, that's God. the term that I use. So I come up, I greet. <laughs> He's a great host. I'm I gonna greet. ask the question anyway because I, I like to ask this to people who get on stage. Is what's the worst thing you've ever done on stage? Um. Well. Okay. I, Kelsey, I want Kelsey to answer yeah. the question yeah. though. Apparently. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Let me in, coach. She, how'd you come up with the answer so fast? Oh, she remembers it like like it was last night. Well, I'll, I'll I'll let you do the detailed version, but really the version was this. A lot of our comedians, you know, encourage Shy. They say, Shy, come on, go up there, do a few jokes, do a few minutes, man. You got this. Like, you know, they want him to to experience it and and get confident. Why are they like nineteen seventies black guys? By the way, <laughs> come on, Shy. That's my default. Get up there, man. That's do my this, default dude. Voice. I don't know. That's what I remember. Superhero gang is on the mic. 
<laughs> yeah. I was going to say, well, I won't say it. I, I, <laughs> Please go ahead and say it. I don't it, know Kelsey, why. Well, I was just, you're... yeah. You, I, I don't know why, but like, I have like a 50 year old black man stuck inside of me. <laughs> I'm still trying to get him out, by the way. The white girl yeah. with the black inside. Yeah. I, already, I, already put a, I already put a From ring on her. What more do you want? Yeah. From the time I wasn't even born it. Okay, have anyway. You, have you ever taken Ambien? Has it ever come out if oh you my, took Ambien? That is so weird you bring that up because you, you should take we some were Ambien. just talking about Ambien. I took Ambien one time and yeah. it was enough to... Did the did yeah. the 50-year-old black man come out? No, I think his fairy godmother came out. Oh. <laughs> as high as a kite <laughs> okay <laughs> all right so anyway i think the the funniest i wouldn't say it's the worst thing you've done it's the funniest kind of you know like mistake i guess was when you were getting given a joke by a comedian and he gave you one of his he, well, no, well, he kind of wrote a joke right so yeah one of the comedians yeah. said hey hey shy listen just go up there and tell a fucking joke i'm like okay, <laughs> all right uh, well will you write one for you i'll write one for you all right he said all right go up there and when you say your spiel, go, like, hey, why are you guys looking at me like your TSA? You know, because for those of you at oh, home, yeah, yeah. I'm brown and I have a big beard. Oh, my goodness. So that was, that was his joke that he wrote for me. Well, For the listener, you didn't get this part, but I actually patted Shy down for yeah. explosive devices right. while he was yeah. walking in this evening. <laughs> <laughs> so. He believes he pat the beard. Yeah. yeah. What, he, what he doesn't know is I stuffed a 50 year old black man inside Kelsey who has <laughs> explosives inside him. Yeah. I'm like a Russian doll. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. I'm just a red herring. I'm a, red herring. I'm a brown herring. Oh, yeah. uh, brown hair. Uh, anyways. Okay. Back to the joke. How much time do we have left? That didn't happen. Oh. <laughs> the light's not on yet. Let's okay. keep uh, going here. Oh, yeah. So the, that was the joke. All right. So I go up on stage. And because I, I go and I say all these rules, you know, track your cell phones, blah, 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 do this, do that. And then everybody looks at me like, oh, OK, shut up. And so I'm supposed to say, why are y'all looking at me like your TSA? And so I'm, I'm rehearsing just that one line. Just how over how and does over. that line get delivered? How does it get delivered in your head? Oh. Well, OK, so the, the comedian. Can I, can I hear it how you would say it on stage? Well, I could tell you how the comedian did it. OK. When he did like, hey, why are y'all looking at me like, well, <laughs> <laughs> hey. Why y'all looking at me like your TSA? You know, like he wanted me to yell it because <laughs> he, he, yeah. he was a he was a hell he was a yelling yeah, comedian. I like it. Right? Okay, yeah. okay, He's hilarious. Okay. One of our favorites. Um, that was out of character hearing you yell like that just now. Yeah, actually, I've been I've been cranking yeah. your mic all night, so <laughs> <laughs> he's probably been turning mine down. Yeah, am I right? Yeah. <laughs> Turned down for what? I I send this off to get edited to a uh, huge shout out to Brian Shazo, who's gonna yeah. get all the clips out of this podcast. So <laughs> Sorry, he gets to do that. Yeah. No, so uh, so I go up on stage, I do the admin stuff, and then I've been rehearsing it, rehearsing it over and over, just a stupid one fucking line, and I go up on stage and it goes, hey. Why are you guys looking at me like I'm TSA? Oh no! And they're yeah. like, what? I said I'm TSA. So that yeah. that is gonna make it. Why would they look at me if I'm TSA? Why would they look at? And then, and I'm like, <laughs> I knew I blew it, and the comedian's sitting right behind the stage, right? So I go down the stairs, my <laughs> head's so down, my head's down, you know, my head's down, and I look okay. up, I look up, and I see the comedian. And he looks like. Shy, you fucked up that one line. <laughs> He's you like fucked one up my line. joke. Yeah, you he had looks, one line. Yeah, he, he looked. <laughs> the one thing he said to me is like, "Shy, you fucked up that one line." <laughs> right after I get off stage, no, like, oh, don't worry about it, buddy. No, no like, oh, you, hey, that was a good no, try. Like, straight you to it. You fucked up that one line. And you haven't told the joke since. Bummer. I haven't told a joke since. <laughs> you, should, you, should, you should keep telling jokes. No, because he's you've, got a few good you've ones. You've had a ton of funny ones in the last. 60 minutes, 50, 51, well, two minutes. See, that's the um, thing. I, I like to have a good time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> see, here's the thing. So does, Listen. La, uh, so does Luke. So. Kelsey, can I, can I get a beer from you? Oh, yes. Fridge Coming right up. Here we go. I've been waiting for this. Here, here, here. So that's what I'm really here for. There's there. There's nice. There. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Okay. Oh, Anyone else? Anyone else? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. May as well while you're in there. This yeah. podcast brought to you by our sponsor, <laughs> Beer. Thank you, Beer. Thanks, Beer. I used to I used to call him out I from really the good old want, Rocky Keystone Mountains. Light. Yeah, I want Keystone Light to sponsor. Um, so, so that's it. Is one you messed up one line and you don't want to tell jokes anymore, Shy? Well, it's not that. It's just so I have some ideas, right? For for a, I got probably have like three minutes just worth of ideas, but not yeah. rehearsed jokes. Um, I like having fun in conversations, but I don't know if I'm a performer. Can I, I throw you in on set? 
I got I got a, I got a I got a Wenatchee comedy showcase that I think that there's some time for you on. <laughs> you want to do it? Ooh. How many? How much? How much time is it? I don't know. Do do four minutes. I could probably do four minutes. He's got four minutes of material. I could do four minutes. I could do exactly four minutes. The, I'm, I'm, <clears throat> the what set, is it? The is set it is not. It's it's uh, it's the end of the summer. It's on the twenty seventh of August. July is the Thursday night. Thursday so night? Thursday night. What is the twenty seventh? Oh really? You're gonna do it on a Thursday night? No, to, it's have, not my. It's not my show. I'd have to leave. I'd have to leave the red line for. It's someone else's you'd show. You'd have to not host our show. Yeah, in it's order. It's someone to, else's yeah, show. Yeah, that's what I mean. What is the twenty seventh? What is the twenty seventh? I don't think. I think well, I lied. We do, they we have a show. Is what I'm but saying. you'd be Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, all of those. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, 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 well. Off-season. You should. You should do. You should do. You should do. Okay. Okay. We're gonna work because I think you should. I think you should do your jokes. I've been dying. I've been laughing more on this podcast than I have in. Oh yeah, he's hilarious. Quite a while. Thank you, baby. He really is the funniest person I've ever met. So, tell me this: when you were okay, I didn't get this in earlier when we were back in LA. A lot of funny people. (laughs) When we when we were back in LA, did you did you do for fun? Did you guys like do comedy shows? Is that what you were into? We went to a few together. Mm -hmm. Um, We saw Anthony Jeselnik. We okay. did. We saw Justin like, like just at like a Jerry. like a workout Luke, set. Did uh, you go yeah, like find yeah, him at their yeah, spots? It was awesome. Yeah, we did a super secret comedy show. Yeah. That's what I want to find is on there. Would love to go to um, LA Eliza Schlesinger, Maria Bamford. Mm-hmm, it was. Uh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm like, it was a killer. We lineup. were like first. It was amazing. Oh, and then we've also insane. been to some big ones. Like we went to uh, Louis, Louis C.K. at the. Um, oh, was that the forum? The forum. Yeah. Jealous. It was. Do you want me to dive into that? Still amazing. Huh? Do you want me to dive into Louis C.K.? <laughs> oh, yeah. Sure. <laughs> Deep dive. Okay. Yeah. What's that? Is is he is he a sexual predator? Oh. <laughs> you want me to dive in like that? Oh. Do you think he is? Um, you know, I I don't know enough. But the the thing is, it's like I only know what I hear from other podcasts. That's, I mean, that's he's the a nice funniest guy. Thing. Maybe he's a little. He was a great guy on stage. I maybe mean, he's maybe a little aggressive. Maybe a little confused. Touch, he, he maybe a, maybe maybe he's got a drinking problem. Who knows? But I, I don't know anything. I only know what I hear from other podcasts, but what I feel comfortable with from what I hear like people who know him talk about mm-hmm. is that is that he asked everyone to do what he did. Mm. <laughs> and probably like it still sucks no that matter really what. That's really bad. Yeah. It's I a have really heard, weird thing. It's a really weird I thing. I have heard that since the whole incident has gone down um that he ha- now has been starting his shows with so how's your year going? Oh, I love it. <laughs> Which I think is a really great way to kind of, I mean, sexual predator or not, like, he's able to make fun of that. That's pretty, uh, I mean, I don't know, you gotta have some balls there. Predators, <laughs> oh, predators yeah, seems, predator seems over the top. It Just does. for what I've heard, it seems over the top. Just yeah. alien, like, sexual predator versus we, sexual he, alien. He's a weirdo. Oh, he's yeah. definitely a weirdo. Yeah, I think he's a little weird, but I, I wouldn't call him a predator. But it seems like, it does seem like he asked everyone. It does seem like he asked everyone. Yeah. I just don't know enough about it. Of course, it. I wasn't there. Yeah. No one yeah. was there. Yeah. Well, the one two, time I saw two him. Two people were there, I guess, the time that got called out. There no, were listen, the one time there. I saw him, he was a perfect gentleman. He was on stage. He did his jokes. He walked off. He didn't say anything to us or anything, right? He just did his jokes and left, right? Yeah. He, he didn't, did he touch I, you? <laughs> I don't know. If, no, he he asked, if, he, if he asked <laughs> me, if he it. said, hey, <laughs> hey, Luke, can I jerk off in front of you? I would say yes. <laughs> mm-hmm. I would absolutely 100% say yes. So that's me. Yeah. yeah. And I have nothing to gain from it, really. So you're sexual prey. I mean, I guess. <laughs> and it's not prey if I say yes, though. <laughs> so no, you, you prayed. You don't know that you are prey. You prayed for that sex. That. Yeah, that something okay. like that. You're for the sex. I don't know. I do I have to ask to if I want to do if I want to if I want to do it back while he's doing it? Do I have to ask? Like, oh, can that I That might can be I another thing else? you need to look into. Yeah. <laughs> That's a reciprocal. That might, yeah, that might be a separate situation. That's like a reciprocal <laughs> jerk. Yeah, yeah like, circle jerk. Like, can I, no, can infinity I, jerk. No, I don't want to touch anyone. I just want to. I just want to jerk back. <laughs> if I jerk back, do you have to ask to jerk or back if someone's already together. doing yeah. it? <laughs> Is it too early to talk about this stuff? <laughs> I don't no? think okay. so. I think too early? I think we're pretty it. into it. I think we're way into it. I'm just wondering. Like, I love that saying, is it too early for this? <laughs> yeah. Because like it's, it's if we're gonna get nonsense. there anyway. Why is it too nonsense early? Question. Oh, yeah. absolutely! I love it. <laughs> okay, there's the pullback. Uh, 
Guys, so we got that over with. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so now Kelsey and I, speaking of a sexual predator, Kelsey okay. and I met on Tinder, by the way. Did you? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Really? That was that was one of my that was one of my wrap up questions. Crazy, right? That's guys. amazing. Tinder in Los Angeles. What's the like Can I have percentage? An award, please, okay, hold on. <laughs> Tinder like lasting. Like really, you know, think I about mean, probably like less one, than ten. Yeah, I was gonna say one in ten, maybe. I, I mean, think it's one in Tinder, is it? <laughs> so that's a ten percenter. Yeah. Um, wh- which one of you was just trying to smash? Uh, <laughs> honestly, I was not. I, you weren't trying to smash. I mean, I I was at a place in my life where I was done with the smashing. <laughs> and you were still on Tinder. I'd been smashed Why enough. Why were you still on Tinder? <laughs> I actually only was on it because I was dating this guy in Louisiana, really random, but uh, it just wasn't working out. I mean, he was in Louisiana. I was in Los Angeles. Like, that it was kind of getting to a crossroads. Like, all right, mm-hmm. well, what do we, you know, where are we going from here? It wasn't going anywhere. So I spent a few months kind of soul searching slash distracting myself with tinder because i didn't want to talk to him so i that's why i was on tinder because i was trying to find a relationship but i just didn't want to keep going back into a relationship that i knew that wasn't going to get anywhere so my intention wasn't to just de- like date anyone that i met i really wanted to meet somebody and like share a connection with them you and both swiped r- right yeah and it's oh, yeah. really hard to meet people that like actually want to share a connection with you in la like really really hard and more, more than likely just they're more interested in them than themselves than than you and that's okay like i respect that but it's like once you get to a place in your life where you just want to be with someone and you don't want to be alone anymore that gets really really hard so yeah that's that's how tinder it's happens. again really hard so who, first who, date. No, hold on hold on no <laughs> i love really hard on the first date holy shit we're gonna get to hold that on. in two seconds uh Pause. who who sent the first message and what was it he sent the first. Was it was it gentlemanly? I'm a lady. <laughs> did yeah. you you did you say milady? I did. I said I'm a lady. Uh, so you know it's like on Tinder, it's kind of like this game where it's like you, okay, course, you can both match, yes. but it's like if you initiate after the match, <laughs> then you're kind of a aggressive woman unless you're on like Bumble or something, right? Like it's kind of like this un- card, like this rule. Like, Bumble, I've like actually never heard of that. So one. Bumble's where the girl initiates, but oh. all other dating apps, you're kind of supposed to wait for the guy. It's like, okay, you made that initial match, but now they have to decide if they still actually want to talk to you, which is messed up, right? Because it's like... Girls probably match way more with guys than, than guys match with girls, right? But they still get to make that decision if they actually want you once they match with you. Like, uh, do I really like her? Now that, you know, now that I got what I wanted, right? That initial yeah, right. Sa- satisfaction. Okay. But yeah, he, he reached out first. and yeah, what's, what, what's the message? It was it really w- sweet. Give me a line. I don't know. Was it do you want or trying to fuck? I forgot what it was. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you at? No. Uh, no. Try, it was, it was really to, like. Trying to lay some pipe. That's what it was. <laughs> trying to lay some pipe. And it was just a pipe character. <laughs> oh, yeah. my God. Oh, my God. Uh, eggplant emoji. No. Uh, Super Mario. <laughs> it was Super Mario on the green pipe. Huh? He was really like, hey, uh, we, we talked for a little bit. And then here's the other step in Tinder. You don't just give your number off the bat. Like, right. You kind of have this instant message thing going on. And you see if the, the conversation turns into more than an instant message conversation and if you want to give that person your number i personally had never really gotten past that initial instant message at that point Mm -hmm. i could kind of tell like vet them out and be like you know what i think this guy's just trying to hook up with me or like this isn't right or whatever so shy was like probably only the second person i ever even actually gave my phone number to and and oh wow yeah and then he he did it very timely like very much you know a gentleman was like kind of kept checking in on me and then he asked me out on a date but it was like a whole week in advance (laughs) and i thought that was really cool because that never happens in la um it's always very much like what are you doing in 30 minutes what are you doing tonight yeah yeah Yeah, like we matched because we're close so like a week is like wow like he wants to see me in a week yeah big span of time yeah so he invited me to a bar for a company outing oh is that what you were doing I was just trying to smash. Everyone oh. knows that. <laughs> Katie and I, Katie and I went to high school youth group together. We were we're we're, we're from a church. Oh my god! Yeah, it was where I knew. He Katie was the from. weirdo emo kid. Oh, <clears throat> that, I don't that, see that at all. The A line haircut. Oh, oh, nice. Big gauges in my ears. Wow. Yeah, like, lip pierced. He in looked a couple nothing spots. like this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh wow! Um, Who was your favorite band in high school? Oh boy, uh, uh, some that you won't know. Emery, I'm just gonna say. Oh, I know Emery. Do you know Emery? Mm-hmm. I got a little email for a little bit. Emery, a little um, Sarah in my blood. August burns red. <laughs> Thirty mm-hmm. seconds to Mars. Oh yeah, uh, everyone knows thrice, those. Thrice, I can do thrice. 
Uh, anyway. So anyway, anyway <laughs> Luke was actually in we love just with my best the story, friend. But yes, I was but... not in love with her best friend. <laughs> I was in love with everyone in high school. Oh, okay. <laughs> but I, was I thought you hated everyone. You're emo. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> That doesn't like go with your theme. No, <laughs> rocker I just, band. I don't know. I was know. trying to smash. Um, and I played in bands. Yeah, I used to play music. I don't oh, play music anymore. Cool. But but way later in life, I messaged mm-hmm. Katie on Facebook. Yeah. Oh, wow. So you guys always kind of knew each other. but We, we, we knew, knew of each, each other. other. Right. Yeah. Oh, sorry. And then he was living in my hometown, actually. And I had just moved back from Denver. I lived out there for five years. I was living years. up in Waterville. Oh, cool. Yeah. So I come from Wheat Town up in Waterville. Or I was and working in Waterville. Yeah, yeah you were working thing. up there and. Anyway, he messaged me, and I was actually in Denver visiting friends, and I was like, I got the message, and I was like, what the fuck is he messaging me for? Like, yeah. this is super weird. Trying to smash. And uh, <laughs> I was obviously not in town, so mm-hmm. it was a couple of days, and things went well, and we hung out, and finally, he was like, yeah, let's hang out sometime. And I'm like, okay, like, when? And he's like, I don't know. I mean, whenever. Like... <laughs> And then I was like, okay. And he's like, well, I'm in one ash. And I'm like, okay, so did you want to get a beer? And he's like, yeah, that'd be great. It's like, <laughs> okay. Like, I guess I was a, I was a bad self-starter. Oh, well. So Shy had it. Shy, Shy, Shy set the date. It. I he did. did. Yeah. What was the first date like? First date was honestly beautiful. It was, uh, so we met at a bar and um, I got there super late. So I, I actually really appreciate mm-hmm. it. He invited me. He invited me to a bar where his company was having outings. It wasn't like, even my company. It was Jacob's company. Right? Oh, yeah. It was a different company. Yeah. At the time, I didn't really know that. I didn't really know what was going on. I was like, okay, there's other people there. He's not having me meet somewhere alone. Like, this seems legit. You know, mm-hmm. like, he's not trying to do anything sketchy. Right. Important. So, right. Yep. So I met him there. I took an Uber, though. Right. Right. So I met him at this bar in downtown L.A. called Villains. And um, really great time. We, we ended up, you know, talking for hours. And we were kind of like, you know, we got hungry. So we're like, well, let's go get food. And he drove. And so then at that point, you know, we, don't, we talked for hours. I'm like, now I'm getting in the car with this guy. And I'm like, oh, I don't know. Like this his, car, kinda, his, his car? His car? Oh, yeah. his car. Not an Uber. Mm-hmm. Not an okay. Uber. And in his car. And I'm like, okay. you know, I'm already feeling like, okay, like uh, this isn't I was normal. Like, I, was not, and, and I, was, I was worried, too. I was like, where am I going to hide the shovel? You know, like <laughs> it's, it's in the back. And luckily, I had an SUV and a big tarp. And you know to get a bag of lime yeah. to bury with, also. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, it helps. Uh, mask you should talk the, offline the a little bit. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. we got so, it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm glad I made it past that. Uh, yeah. So Me then, too. so then we moved onward to our second location, which was called uh, the name of it. Actually, ironically, we just realized this. This is a total like. Thing that happened that we didn't realize, but the, the name of the restaurant we went to is called Coles, which oh. is now our dog's name, but yes. was not on purpose at all. One of uh, these dogs making all the noise in the yeah, background. Yeah, yeah. So yes. we went to a place called Coles where they serve French dip sandwiches, and okay. we shared our au jus. Yeah. So I was like, okay, this Bless is you. serious. Super huge. Right? So we're like, we're dipping That's our sandwich big. in the same liquid. And what you don't know is that <laughs> Coles actually makes their sandwiches out of those little dog mixes. That you yeah. <laughs> 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 Ew, <gross. laughs> and now here we are. Yeah, you know, so I was like, okay, this, there's some very significant things happening. I, I'm letting my, and then I'm like, I'm telling him my life story. He's telling me his, like, or just like, oh my gosh. And then it kind of just, it honestly, from that date forward, I felt Wait, like. Wait, you forgot the third part of the date. Oh, and then on the third part of the Hello. date, we went to. After Coles. After, after Coles. Coles. So this is like now oh, a six this, hour long this, date. Is this the part where Shy does the Super Mario thing? He tried. <laughs> he went, <laughs> he went down the tunnel. <laughs> or I, actually, I can't remember. Oh, oh. <laughs> Oh, wait, 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 wait. We went dancing. <laughs> no, we did. We went dancing. Listen to some Usher. I remember that very clearly, okay. like, vividly. Some Usher came on, felt feeling that. And then we went home, and it was perfectly respectable. He dropped me off like a gentleman. Yep. Um, we did kiss. We had a very, you know, um, just, yeah, it was a nice kiss, but, you know, super, in, it, like, I don't Would know. You call it was it passionate? Very sweet. Would you call it a passionate kiss? It was passionate, but it wasn't, like, was overly, it, like, it oh my God, I want to have sex with Would you. Would you call it wet? Mm. No. I can't remember if he's... St- I think he stuck your tongue in my mouth. I'm not really sure. Yeah, you know you got your yeah. tongue in there. Yeah, yeah. 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 I was, I was rounding first. You know what I mean? Like, I was rounding first. Yeah. Yeah, 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 all of it yeah, felt yeah. like all in all was really Super respectful, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it was a line drive in the, in the center field. And I was like, uh, yeah, okay. I can get that. It's a solid base hit. Yeah, Our first kiss... Like- 
was in the igloo. Oh. <laughs> we love the igloo, by the way. We, we've been taking we all our comedians the there after we the show. Do. We really love the igloo. Oh, yeah, we saw igloo. you guys there a few weeks ago. Halibut and chips. It's one of our oh, favorite man, spots. Man, what a gem. Uh, what yeah. What a gem. Uh, right, yeah, right, by the, right by the back pool table over there. I could have had my first kiss at the igloo. I wouldn't have been mad at that. Well, you know. <laughs> <yeah. fun. laughs> we make it. We made it like our spot. Yeah. You know? Where did you guys sit? We were playing pool. We were playing pool. And I was walking over. Were we with other people, too? I was walking over. No, we were we were alone. It was one of my spots. I've always loved the igloo. Mm-hmm. I used to I used to be a decent pool player, and if you're playing pool in oh, Menachee, too, by the way. that's the um, place. The igloo has really nice tables, and then Joe's East, which used to be called Willie's, well, yeah. um, mm-hmm. has pretty nice tables. So there's only there's only some yeah a handful of good tables in town. So I used to go to the igloo all the time. And it's got the coolest. It, it's just it's a local crowd. They it's so go cool. there. They've been there forever. I think I think they're one of the last bars that would still run a tab for a regular. Mm-hmm. Like if you were there every yeah. night, they would run a tab for you. The owners are from Waterville. And okay. the owners are from yeah. Waterville, which is I don't know if you guys know Waterville. It's a very small I've town. I've heard up about on the it. Plateau. I've been hearing about it a lot lately for some <clears throat> reason. It just keeps getting brought up in conversation. Yeah, it's a it's a small town of two thousand up on the plateau. So the owners are from there. I used to work there. I. I love I love the igloo. I actually can't say how much I love the igloo. Yeah. Um, my favorite part about the igloo is the actual model that is encased inside right? of it. I and know. It's probably one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. Of the igloo? Yeah. <laughs> the igloo in the igloo? It's just yeah. so cool that it's they have It's so that. cool. It's like blast from the past. It's like you don't see yeah. that kind of stuff anymore. I always take the comedians and show them that. And some of them are like cool and some of them are like oh my god this is so cool <laughs> it's about 50 50 yeah that's so yeah funny. <laughs> so that's one of that one that did. one's close to my heart i wish i never used to go to bars like that uh-huh. like i mean coming from denver i did like the club scene sure. or sports bar right. style and here in wenatchee they're all pretty much not like dive bar, but definitely like you gotta find the hole in the walls. Yeah, and I was not like that. Luke definitely pushed me out of my my zone, the bougie zone. Sure. I think being in college and stuff too, you're you're more um, apt to kind of be drawn towards that more. Well, like have you ever been downtown Denver? D- yes, it's like all bars. It's, yeah, and it's, it's crazy down there. It's Irish bars, it's yeah, sports bars, it's pool bars, it's all kinds. But there's not really like a hole in the wall. Sure. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Yeah, so. There's lots of holes in the wall here, isn't there, Luke? Oh, yeah. oh, I would know. I would know them. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. There's a few. Yeah, and they're all fantastic in yeah. their in their own way. Yeah, they're they're good. Um, I just was too snobby to do it. I feel you. you know? guys, yeah, yeah, yeah. Guys, we love this town. Yeah, I'm I'm so glad you love this town. Uh, I hope you love this podcast. You've been listening to this. Probably doesn't matter. Uh, you are you ready? Yeah. Here we go. This is. I hope that was loud enough. Okay. This is the lightning round. Ready? <laughs> Get ready this, for this some is, questions. This is, lightning rounds. this is very simple. This oh, is very simple. Excited. I don't even have that many questions. Okay. Um, we're gonna get the Are music going. Us? Yep. No. Nope. Here we go. Okay. Mm. We're gonna we're gonna get that up in the monitor. You feel that? You feel mm-hmm. that? Feel good? Okay. So so here's what it is. Just a couple questions. Would you rather be too hot, too cold? Too cold. Too cold. Too cold for both of you. Uh, would you rather get attacked by a bear or an alligator? Uh, I would say bear because you can give him a bear hug at the end. You're both bear. Unless you're I dead. I think bear because I don't want to drown. Okay. Yeah. $100,000 <laughs> immediately right now or a coin flip on $2 million. $100,000 right now. You're taking it? I'm, I'm taking the cash? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. On $2 million? Yeah. I, I quit gambling. 50 so. 50. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Golly. Uh, early bird, night owl. Early bird. Oh, yeah. Night owl. Early bird and a night owl. I used to. I'm, I'm a, this night seems owl. to loan itself better to comedy mm. yeah. than I, the I early bird be, thing. I used to be a night owl. Now I'm an early bird. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I like worms. And then here's the here's the one you got to think about. This is, I try to end it with this, and I'll even stop the music. Here we go. Here's the one I want I want to talk about. Always say whatever comes to your mind first to anybody, or never be able to speak again. And I'm gonna kill. I'm not only gonna kill the speech. I'm also gonna kill sign language. So I'm going no communication ever or always say the first thing that you think. Always say the first thing I think. Same. 
You're gonna take it. You over, can always over apologize just, and say you have a really bad problem. Yeah, I'm really. Compulsive. I do that half the time right now, anyways. Yeah. Just, you're, you're, are you that <laughs> good? He's pretty much there, actually. Yeah. So. I wish I was that good. I wish I was that good to just say whatever <laughs> I thought. I guess it's better than nothing. If you kill sign language, also that's pretty tough. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, okay. you get facial. I gotta communicate. Still. I gotta express myself. Yeah. I think you could get away could you imagine with imagine just, just holding that all in and not being up being a mute and like right. not being able to express I, well, it in I guess any what sort I of way. Talk, I'd probably write? start punching people. I yeah. don't know if you can write. <laughs> I don't know if you can I write or like not. Maybe people. you can write. Does um, anybody ever say that? The second one? They I don't know. I've never asked anyone. <laughs> I, I write Cash. They don't like it. I, I write everyone new questions, so that's your guys' question. You got that one oh, thank for you. the first time. Yeah. Thank you so much. It seems it would seem rough. Maybe someone's at the door. Um Guys, what do you have coming up? Where, where do we find you? Okay, so our website is RottenApplePresents.com. RottenApplePresents.com. I'm trying to get it without the bark in the back. Rotten oh, Apple. Hold on, hold on. Where do we find you? So you can find us at RottenApplePresents.com or WenatcheeComedy.com or ChelanComedy.com or RottenAppleComedy.com. <laughs> I bought all those. You are oh, good job. Oh, you got <laughs> all the good ones. Yeah, RottenApplePresents.com is definitely uh, our do you do, base. And you do Facebook? Do you do Yeah, at RottenAppleCrew. Yeah. Also, yeah, we yeah. own RottenAppleCrew.com. But yeah, at, okay. Rob, okay. at RottenAppleCrew. That's kind of our moniker on Twitter. Not kind of. It is our Perfect. moniker on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. We do giveaways, promotions, uh, announcements all the time. Uh, Kelsey's always on social media, and she's really good about keeping that updated. Killer. Our Instagram's really cool. We do two black and whites and a color, so we alternate. So it has a really cool pattern when you look at our, our, That's our awesome. profile. Um, and, yeah, we got comedians coming all the way from now through Labor Day. And every weekend, uh, this weekend we only have two shows because of the holiday weekend, um, but pretty much – Five shows a weekend. So you have one chance in Wenatchee. And if people are in Wenatchee listening to this, every Thursday we're going to be doing it at the Red Line. Every Thursday. It's a great time. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you guys made it out to a show. We loved having you there. That was a really good show you caught. Uh, uh, our buddy Alex Haley's coming come out to a couple weekends in a row. Sure. He's, he's having a really good time. Um, but it's just, yeah, we want we want to bring more. That's, that's, that's kind of our MO at this point. You know, Rotten Apple... We're at the end of the day, we're an event production company. I think our skill set is on the marketing side, but also the guest experience and producing these these really cool totally. events. Yeah, and uh, we love doing it. And we love this town. We love this town. Cool. Who who do you have coming up next couple of weeks? Can so you... uh, yeah, so for this week, since Fourth of July falls on a Thursday, yes. we won't be doing a Wenatchee show, but sure. we do have uh, two big shows on Friday night, seven and nine thirty, with Monica Nevy and Derek Sheen. Okay. Um, they're both coming from Seattle. And then a um, week after that, we will have a Wenatchee show on Thursday, the 12th. Um, and then we'll have the Ruby show again on the 13th and 14th with cool. Harry J. Riley. And then, um, yeah. Every and the following weekend, Thursday. probably the one of our biggest weekends of the year, uh, oh, yeah. a guy named Ian Baggs coming to town. He, he actually incredible. came back by popular request. We had him last year. He did a show to 160 people awesome. three times that weekend. And he does a different show every time, just a master of crowd work. So uh, that would be amazing if people could make it out to the – was that July? Yeah, That's July 18th, 1920. Yeah. Awesome. Perfect. Okay, guys, make sure to check out all of the website and social media for Rotten Apple. Uh, please check out our website. Get on the mailing list I have at thisprobablydoesntmatter.com. Uh, we're, we're in the works for maybe something pretty cool end of summer yeah. as far as a series. So – uh, <clears throat> get on the mailing list. Get in early. I might give you some deals on tickets. It's going to be an awesome time. And as always, please remember this probably doesn't matter. <laughs>